right, all right. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Thank the Lord for this beautiful, beautiful, blessed day. I hope and pray that everybody is doing well and God bless you. As you can see that title up there, you will lose your family behind church. You will lose your family behind church. And I want to give a shout out to my man, DeAndre. And I thank you for that email that you just sent, brother. Um, very powerful. Let me cut that phone off. Very powerful and so true. This is another one of those touchy subjects. And I've heard many preachers tell you your family don't come first. That you need to take care of the church business first. And you got people right now, pastors, minister of music, evangelists, prophets, that have been divorced, split up, because church is more important than a family. And this thing about church is so mistaught, so misunderstood. And there's so many people with all these programs making you believe that if you don't come to all of this stuff, you're going to hell. And I like what my man, Minister Jay, always tell me. He said, as a minister, he say, God is first. He says, my family. He said, my family is my first congregation. He said, they are my first responsibility. And my thing is, how can so many pastors go out, minister to somebody else, but they can't minister to their own child in their own home. See, let me go back to a word that you don't hear at church a lot. You hear a lot of begging. But let me talk about this word called charity that starts at home. Charity that's not being taught, which is love. You got pastors neglecting their own flesh and blood because the church is more important. Well, you have to truly understand what the church is. It never was meant to be all about this buildings, these buildings that you see up. Nowadays, people are more caught on the building and a title, and they lost as a J word. And when you put your own family on hold, see, that's backwards. Let's go back to the garden, Sister Lisa. Everything goes back to the garden. Let me show you how God showed what was so important. After he started creating everything and said it was good, and we saw Adam, and then who did he form from Adam? Eve. What that? What was that ordained right there? Before even any building was up, there was marriage. That lets you know what comes first. God is always first. Then it's your, that's your family. He didn't tell Adam, I need you to go build a church building. I need you to go preach here, preach there. This is the big old problem right now. And now you got pastors that won't even teach their own children, and now their children growing up wild. Not all of them. Some come out good. But nine times out of ten, when you look at a preacher daughter or a preacher son, and I'm not talking about them in a bad way, but, but nine times out of ten, they come out a little jacked up. Because, oh, church, 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 church. You got to be in church Monday. You got to be in church Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Same, what the sad thing is, is that most people do all they dirt on the weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, and get right up in the morning and go to church. See, people get mad at the truth and half the time not even going to repent. And how you will lose your family quick because now you are so involved in the church you don't miss your son basketball game. All you got preachers telling some preachers to tell their son, you can't play basketball. It's a sin. Sports is a sin. So now they just all messed up. You don't miss your daughter's piano recital. Now you can't go to nothing because church, church, church. Let me tell you something. I tell anybody because I make people mad when I speak the truth. I am a minister of music. And I learned how to balance in my life. Balance is what you got to have. Balance. You got to know how much to do and how less to do. And the thing you got to tell most people that don't want to hear is no. When you tell people no, they get an attitude, which, well, I need you to come over here and do this. No. I'm going home. I got family to be with. That's how you got to do people. I got, my wife is waiting on me. My daughter's at home. But people got a hard time telling people no. 
And that's one thing you have to do because you have a life to live outside of church. That's why when you go back, I'm going to preach in a minute, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It's a time and a season for everything. And most people don't catch that. Everything under the heavens, that lets you know, see, when I leave church, <laughs> I'm not finna cut no church music on. I'm not finna, I don't want to hear no more conversations about who did this, who did. I don't want to hear no choir members calling me, leave me the hell alone and let me cut my other music on. Let me go home and get my glass of wine. Let me learn. Let me chill because that's what I like to do is chill and, and, and ease my mind. See, it's a time in the season. I don't want to hear Amazing Grace all day. People like to call it secular music. Like, well, that's your belief. I ain't never seen the word secular in the Bible nowhere, but I'm not going to jump off and all of that. I know how to have a good time and chill out, but you will lose your family. Some of these engagements, minister of music, you got to turn them down. You can't go to everything, and you can't please everybody. Pastors know that. If you are a pastor looking at this video, it's, it's not an easy job being a pastor, but you better have your house in order. Now, let's go back to the Word of God. The Bible teaches you, I believe that's in Timothy, that if a man cannot run his own home, he ain't got no business trying to be in the pulpit over the congregation because his house is not in order. Another thing, why do you think deacons was put in place? Why do you think the Bible say, find me seven good men? Got to take the load off of the pastor so they don't have to worry about a lot of this stuff. But here's the problem. Too many people sitting back on their sorry tail waiting on the pastor to do everything. Running to the pastor every week with their problems. Let me tell you something. Your pastor probably got more problems than you do. People need to learn to pray on their own. Start praising on their own. Learn how to worship on your own. Stop calling your pastor every week because things ain't going right. If you got God in your life like you say you do, why is it you run into the pastor every week? Now, we know you got the pastor's got to counsel, counsel some people, you know, and do this and do that. But it's too many people putting their load on their pastor, and the pastor not, is not going to turn them down. I told y'all about this one time. People get mad at me because, well, I need you. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, JT. My, my grandma laying up. We need you to come over there and pray. We need you to lay hands on her. What for? See, I tell the truth. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. You better be lucky I ain't married. 3 o'clock in the morning, I can pray from the house. I can pray right here from the house. What What is driving over there at 3 in the morning going to do? And I say this long prayer and they still die. See, that's too real for most people. God already know what's wrong with people. That's why I don't pray long prayers. He know what's wrong with people. He know what they need. And then here go the selfish part about people. They don't want God to call them on in home. Call them home. Let God do what God do. JT don't have no extra power. My prayer ain't going to get no further than that, that humble man that just prayed. <laughs> I'm just being real, people. People are stuck on ignorance, man. And I mean it out of love. And you will lose your family quick. Now your wife don't want nothing to do with you because you're too busy in the church trying to counsel everybody else's wife that you forgot about loving your own wife, loving your own kids. Like I said, you done miss your sons, whatever he had going. You never around. You never around to see your daughter. Now the church done took you all the way, and now your family is gone. You best to understand you got a job at home first. That's why charity, let's say that again, charity starts at home. This whole thing about confusion of being in the building, it just made me sick to my stomach. I ain't never in my life would have thought so many people would be stuck on the building and think the building is heaven. That they done already made it in. You got to go, JT. You got to go. You got quarrels. You got Bible study. You got mission night. You got this prayer night. Man, come on. God, <laughs> me going to church every week don't put me in the heaven. Uh, I wish people could understand that, man. That's why I slowed down. brother. My brother Jeffrey Joy, and I hope you're looking at this video. You know what I'm talking about. That's why I got out of all those groups, many man. That's why I learned how to tell people no and get somebody else to do it. 
because I got a life to live. Same thing I was talking about when I was doing all these videos and good thing at the time on a lot of stuff. I had an understanding woman. But if you don't have an understanding person either, it's going to be hard for a person to understand what you do in ministry. But see, ministry is 24-7, but you still have to draw the line. You got to get some sleep. Like I said, you ain't going to please everybody. And this is the other problem. You got too many people pleasers. It's too many people pleasers. Too many pastors I know that's people pleasers. They got to try to make everybody happy. Want everybody to like them. But I got a news flash for you, pastor. Everybody ain't going to like you, especially if you're doing right. Now, if you're doing wrong, you'll have a whole lot of people on your team. But every, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody is not going to like you. Don't lose your family. Yo, your family that you build, that God blessed you with behind other people. Here's the other thing. People spend all this time in the church, the ones that they're trying to help so much, and next thing you know, all of them leave the church. Now you done lost your family and everybody that you was caring about gone now. Your family supposed to always be there for you. But I'm going to tell you something. Lord, I say the same. When I get married, people going to really be mad at JT. You think I'm going to answer my phone now? Oh, it's going to be QT. Quality time. Because I got a whole lot of catching up to do. Somebody catch that later on. I got a whole lot of things I need to do. And I don't need my phone ringing with, the, with this mess. And that's why when you are a minister of music, you feel just like a pastor. Because everybody want to call your phone with this, with that. You become, you gain these relationships with people. And then they act like you they pastor sometime. I did, I, brother, brother JT, did you pray for me today? Pray for yourself today. I always pray for you. Hey, you pray for yourself. Do you believe in what you're praying? See, people think I'll be funny when I talk like that, but I'm serious. I, I know too many people won't even pray for themselves. I'm just waiting on somebody to pray for me. I can't pray for myself. Have you tried it? Where is your belief? Good God Almighty. It's sad, man. Charity starts at home. All these programs in church, <laughs> you ain't got to play a part of all this stuff. That's impossible. And let's just get real before I end this video because I didn't even mean to be this long, but I'm just letting the Lord use me. I know pastors that still work. Minister of music that work full-time. It is hard to work a full-time job. Get off work. Try to take care of your family, your own family, and then the church family. It's almost impossible to do that. And then you got to deal with you got to deal with mess in your own family. Then you got to deal with mess at the church. And here go the other key word. <laughs> Don't hardly nobody want to pay you. I'm going to leave on that minute, man. You feel me? Y'all take care and remain blessed. Have a beautiful night. Peace. Don't lose your family behind church.